I am going to rip this game apart. I spent hours in this game that I cannot get back. I loathe this game. If you can even call it a game. Instead of just giving a plain review, I am going to quickly summarize what Ground Zero Texas is. The positive aspects and then the negative aspects. Ground Zero Texas is a Sega CD game dating from 1993. The golden era of grainy looking, full motion video games and also the implementation of CD quality, audio mixed in. It had a budget of 2 million dollars and I'll take their word. The decors, stunts and vehicles are all top notch for those days. They even hired a professional Hollywood film crew to record all this 110 minutes worth of video. It's just too bad that it all looks like a 240p resolution mess in the end. But hey, this shit was really taped and pressed on disc. So the very very thin story here is that a town somewhere in Texas has been sneakily overrun by aliens and they are snatching humans for something that isn't explained. Apparently the nameless special forces which you are part of have been trying to counteract the snatching but failed every time. So they call in you the player. You are the hotshot, the man slash woman with the biggest brains and cojones. And all you do is man turrets in town that search the spots for aliens that pop up in front of your turret. It is absolutely the dumbest shit I ever heard. The player is that special. So take a seat behind a monitor and shoot aliens that want to destroy the turrets. There are four special agents in town that help you. Actually that's what the game tells you. But when playing you'll quickly notice that these four idiots are the worst agents to have as sidekicks. Anyway let me tell you what's great about this game. There are some great stunts and explosions. The whole town explodes in the end. But the best thing is that most of these actors have gotten better movie, TV and voice acting roles after this mind numbing product. Even Danny Trejo has a part in this game. That's it. Because everything I am going to tell you next is just a complete teardown in all negative sense. A verbal destruction of something that deserves the hate of being incompetence. And the trickery that these developers played upon young kids of actually producing a great product. No effort was spent into making this an enjoyable product when it comes to gameplay. No love and affection was given. 2 million dollars just went all to the film crew and 40 dollars left for the game developers to make something that resembles somewhat of a video game. <sighs> Here we go. <sighs> the fact that the government has to send in an extra person to man a digital turret from a distance in order to clean the streets is the worst idea. There's other personnel that can man a turret as well. How shitty was their training may I ask? I like how the game just puts you there and if you don't respond within a second it's game over. You can't even think about the situation for a second even if there's nothing going on. Miss the fact that you need to select a camera and it's over. Fuck it the entire planet is destroyed humanity is dead. This same problem occurs on my other review Tomcat Alley. Pretty dramatic. The thing that cracks me up the most is that the turret cameras are somehow mounted on the front camera of the digital pictures film crew. Because these turret cameras are top shit bro. They can fly all over the place, reach inside the dashboard of jeeps, go next to the jeep or right in front of people in bars and can follow people all around town. Simply put, these stationary turrets are loose cannons and more like extremely flexible flying drones. To be serious, this is a flaw that's common in most 90s film production when technical directors didn't take their job seriously. There's also the fact that your four special agent buddies are all undercover but constantly talk into the camera and the turret. They also have no real purpose throughout the complete game other than be absurdly annoying. Like in Tomcat Alley they are just NPCs that need to be saved from time to time because they are too stupid to fend for themselves. Special agents my ass. One of the worst parts of the game is the actual shooting itself. It goes like this. You choose one of the four stationary turrets. There are four in each part of town, divided into four chapters you need to complete. You have three lives if your turret cameras get destroyed by the aliens. Your loser friends repair the camera, which is similar to using an extra life. And a camera gets back to full health. There is no other way to regain health and no power ups. The only way to get through the shit is to memorize all the patterns and where the aliens pop up. Most aliens are slow as shit. But later on the game gives you the full barf and introduces the sneaky fast sliding aliens that shoot super fast. The biggest downside in all this is the shooting input. The game has no way of using a light gun the menacer. So you're stuck with the d-pad on the controller. You might as well just put chewed gum on the gamepad. Because this is just try on error. And the game is goddamn relentless. Shoot a civilian, game over. Accidentally press the shoot button out of boredom on a civilian, game over. 
failed to communicate to your colleague in just 3 seconds, game over. And it's all back to the beginning. No save points, no save states. It's fucking hardcore. So you need to memorize all the places these aliens pop up in these stationary sequences. Your only save points are at the end of a chapter. So you can start at the beginning of a chapter, if you'd wish so. But man, these shooting sequences are the ultimate drag. There's a body count timer at the bottom, and also a bullet count timer. They serve no purpose in the game, not even when the credits roll. And these aliens keep on coming, coming. It feels like endless waves of aliens. It's all so boring and mind numbing. There were sections where I just lost my concentration and even let the easy aliens slide through because there is no end. The game doesn't tell you when you are progressing. Instead, it tells you where aliens are popping up in these four parts of town. Maybe 20, maybe 40, maybe 50 aliens. Who knows? The game lets you wallow in boredom and sadness. And eventually you get a cutscene of people running from left to right. Why in the holy fuck is this put in this game? How do I even process this useless information? To make it even more random, the game just shows you a clip of townspeople that look like they're acting in some high school stage play. When suddenly, the shit goes down and one of these townspeople is an alien. You just have a few seconds to react. And when you gun down this alien, nothing occurs. This is just an excuse to stretch out the 2 million budget, good sir. Eventually, after shooting waves of aliens for 30 minutes or so, there's some progress. You need to save every stupid special agent in a separate cutscene in order for them to read off the number that's embedded on a dog tag that the aliens are wearing. For real. Aliens wearing dog tags. Can't make that shit up. Then Reese, the irritating special force captain, slaps on a $15 motorcycle helmet with the lousiest gun tag on the side and first person guides you through the alien's nest. How is his helmet capable of delivering the same firepower that was so special, so uniquely introduced in the first 3D animated cutscene and all housed inside this helmet? You know what? Forget about it. The aliens finally expose themselves as fake ass Power Rangers putty looking like douchebags. You then need to type in the code that the special agents have been collecting. Now I missed one number because I failed to save one agent and had to guess one of them. Make a wrong guess and boom, it's game over again. How's that for wasting your time? The game says, fuck you, go and restart all this shit. Blast your way through towards this section and take another guess. Well, it's 1022. The vault opens and one of the special agents is supposedly already snatched inside this cathedral and also too weak to even break open plastic foil because a swiss knife is cutting it like butter. Swap in the second disc and all of a sudden all your teammates are wearing cheap tactical gear. The aliens are on a rampage through town. Your teammates scatter and are leaving you to fix the situation. Somehow you gather the alien tech, which is never shown, to use the same lethal force against them. Okay. The funniest thing is that the aliens are the worst and seem to have no clue what the fuck they are doing. Aliens driving around like rednecks in pickup trucks? Check. Aliens that don't give a shit about killing their friends, check. Recklessly destroying places and coming back for them to stronghold for some reason, check. Absolutely adorable is this cutscene where the aliens shoot up the bar. I love how they placed a random huge pile of nachos, only to just blow it up in slow motion. All for the love of the effects. It's so random, I love it. Look at this chicken shit, what an absolute douche. Also, I don't understand why these special agents are so under-equipped with these Uzis, I guess? The government couldn't spend more money on automatic rifles or some shit, or rocket launchers, so these aliens are actually shooting up places, instead of people, literally making these housings look like shit, and then go inside and around these burned down buildings to defend them? How's that for logic? Does it have something to do with property investment, where they devalue the place to buy it cheap from the market? and build their own taco place. So it's just a bunch of blah blah with aliens fucking up the town in pickup trucks. Which looks more like rioting in the dumbest fashion. The special agents acting like complete cowards and running off and worst of all, these horrendous shooting sequences that take up way too much time. They explode, 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 we get it. You spend two fucking million on this shit. After an endless stream of boredom, you arrive in the final chapter, which has suddenly become even more relentless because there are no extra lives and the aliens are even faster and sneakier in popping up and shooting. And the only way I could get through this mess was to use my camera shield when I was nearly dead. It didn't make for a joyful experience. 
because this is just guessing which pixel moves and shoot at it. But hey, I made it through, which unlocks the final scene, in where one of the special agents arrives at a dirty pool, finds herself an alien Gatling cannon, which I need to fire, why the actual fuck? Do it yourself bitch, at the alien mothership that's fleeing the scene. She literally says, they got Reeves, but how the fuck did this happen? How? Is he dead? Is he on a mothership? And then the player is forced to pull the trigger, so the mothership explodes. Are they even snatched people on board? Do we even care? I sure don't. We are then treated to the most awkward ending in where my comrades are sitting at a table congratulating me. Am I still in the turret or am I walking? Why is her arm in a cask? What the fuck? The camera slash player then slowly walks backwards. Am I trying to escape from these morons? And then the credits roll. There's nothing more. No bonus cutscenes, no making off, no bloopers. Nothing. Fuck you, come again. The same question after every review, is this shit even worth playing? It seems that all these full motion video games for the Sega CD have never stood the test of time. You can watch all these long play videos on YouTube and have a better experience than playing the game. Ground Zero Texas is repetitive as hell. It lacks any gameplay that's engaging. It's a test of endurance and patience to see some form of a cutscene. A cutscene that might or might not be interesting. Most of them aren't and the story is virtually a clusterfuck that sprung from the mind of a young child. It's inconsistent, there are huge plot holes, characters are introduced but never to be heard of again. There's no given explanation of what these aliens even want or why they are so destructive in the end. The biggest shit is that there's absolutely no reason to want to play this for a second time. Imagine again paying full price for this baloney. Poof went all your childhood savings, while instead you could have spent all the hard earned cash on something good, like Terminator 2 the arcade game. This was the already 12th episode of In Retrospective. Man I can't believe it's actually the 12th already. If you like this episode, just me ranting about this shit game, consider watching the other episodes where I place other retro games in today's limelight to see if they are worth digging up. Liked it so much? Consider subscribing and tick the notification bell to keep updated. And I'll see you on the next episode of In Retrospective.